Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick and this is Swiftful Thinking. Uh, in the last two videos we set up our CloudKit container and then we added some basic data to CloudKit. And when we added that basic data we just used basic data types, specifically strings. But a lot of times when you're uploading it to CloudKit you're going to include more complicated assets such as images, videos, or audio. So in this video we're going to look at how to upload images to our CloudKit container because the code is a little bit different than our basic data types. All right, welcome back everyone. We are back in our Xcode project. And before we start this one, I just wanna point out that uh, most of the videos that I have on my channel, in every video we are starting from scratch, we're creating a new file. This video is not like that, unfortunately. This video, we are continuing what we did in the last video. So in the last video in this series, so actually two videos back in the series, we set up CloudKit, we connected to CloudKit, and then the last video in the series, we did a bunch of CRUD functions in CloudKit. We did the create, read, update, delete functions for our fruits. So we added a bunch of fruits to our database. And I have my CloudKit database here. It's pretty simple if you wanna just catch up to speed. Um, it's just a record type called fruits and each fruit has a name. And here we can see the name is coconut and apple. Now, when we did that, and I started talking about it in the last video, uh, when we go to upload these CK records, I'll right click and jump to the definition here. So in the docs, we can see uh, all of the types that CK record, the fields inside a CK record can have. And these are all the types here. So we can have strings, dates, data, bool, integer. Uh, but you're gonna notice here that there is nothing that says images, videos, or audio. And that's because we can't upload an image directly to CloudKit. Instead, we have to convert it to a CK asset and then upload the CK asset. And it actually ends up being a benefit for us that we have to do this because uh, normally all these fields that we have in our CK record, uh, when we go to download a CK record like this coconut, we get all of that data when we download it immediately. So when we download this coconut, we're gonna get these fields, this coconut field. And the difference is if this coconut had a CK asset inside of it and we went to download the coconut, we wouldn't actually download the asset, but rather a URL to where that asset is being stored. So the actual asset that we're uploading, that image, that video, that audio, is not actually going to be inside the CK record of this, of this coconut, but rather just a link to it and then we'll be able to download it separately. And this is actually ideal, this is what we want in our apps, because oftentimes we're gonna download a whole bunch of CK records, so a whole bunch of fruits, and we're only gonna to wanna to download the assets, like the images for those fruits, if those images are coming onto the screen. And that's because those images or those videos are gonna be bigger files. So we wanna avoid downloading all these extra big files if we can. So in the long run, this is actually a benefit for our app, but it is a slightly different configuration on how we upload and download these. So I wanted to make a specific video on this, uh, obviously because it is a pretty common use case in CloudKit. All right, so I'm going back to our Xcode project here and real quickly, uh, let's just jump back to our CloudKit CRUD bootcamp. Uh, so for those of you who are just joining, we have a very basic fruit model. It just has a name and then a reference to the CK record. And we have a very basic UI here. We can type in some fruit, we can add it, and it'll join to our list. And then these fruits, we can either delete them, we can update them. Uh, so just for example, I'm gonna type in watermelon, and I'm gonna click add. And I noticed a second ago, as I started recording this, that uh, it's not updating on my screen when I add it. And I think it's partly because I have really bad internet right now. Uh, my internet's actually down. I'm using a hotspot, as you guys can see up here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do just for this video is this dispatch queue after we save the item, I'm just gonna change this to async after. And let's just do now plus maybe two seconds. So I'm just gonna do a two second delay between adding something and then our next fetch request to refresh our UI here. So let's try that one more time. Uh, I'm not really too worried about this because in a future video we're actually gonna kind of rewrite a lot of this CloudKit code to make it a nice utility class. Uh, but right now, so I have my watermelon. If I add another one, an orange, hopefully it updates after two seconds. And cool, we got an orange here. 
And in this video, when we go to add a new fruit, I just want to upload an image with that fruit. So I don't want to deal with all of like the downloading an image like you would in an actual app. So what I'm going to do is I have an image in my assets folder already, and you can take any image from your computer and just drag it into your assets folder uh, for this. I have an image of the rock. We actually used it in a previous video in this series. So I'm just going to take this image from my assets folder and we're going to upload that. So drag in any image to your assets folder and let's go back to our add item function. And in this add item function, let's first create a reference to that image. So let's say guard let image equals uh, UI image uh, named and I named it the rock. Um, this is the exact string that I have in my asset here, the rock. Uh, and then we'll say else return. I know this is an actual image, so it's not going to fail here. Uh, and then as I was just saying, we can't actually just take this image and add it to our CK record. So we can't call new fruit uh, image and then equals image. This is going to throw us an error because we can't upload a UI image directly to CloudKit. We're actually even getting the error right here in the compiler, which is really nice. Uh, that UI image is not conformed to the protocol. So what we actually need to do is upload this as a CK asset. If I open the parentheses here, we can see that we need a file URL. So basically, even though we already have this image in our app, we can only upload it as a CK asset to CloudKit if it is saved to a URL on our device. So if you've been following my series, you are well aware how to use the file manager because we've covered it in many videos. But basically, we need to save the image to the file manager, save it to the device, and then wherever we save it, that URL, we are going to pass in to our CK asset. So even if we didn't have this in our bundle right here, and if we were downloading this from the internet, after we downloaded that image, we would then first have to save it to the file manager and then convert it to a CK asset to upload it to CloudKit. It sounds like a lot of steps, but it will all happen pretty quickly behind the scenes. So it's really not that difficult once you write a little bit of code for it. All right, so I'm going to, let's say, let path equals, and I'm going to move a little quickly here because I've covered file manager so many times, but let's save it to the file manager dot default dot urls and we're going to save it in the let's, let's do the caches directory i think it's the most common uh, for the user domain mask and this returns us an array of urls so i want to get the first url from there and then we need to give it just like an image name that we're going to save it for so we'll save it as dot appending path component and i'll just save it as the rock dot jpg and let's actually make sure this is a, let's actually put this inside our guard statement as well. So we'll say guard let image equals this comma. And then we'll say let path equals this comma. And then we also need to get the data from this image. So we'll say let data equals image dot uh, JPEG data. Uh, and we'll do compression quality of 1.0. So we're not going to compress it. And we'll do else return. So here we're, we're making sure we have an image. We're making sure we have the path where we're going to save the image in our file manager. And then we're making sure that we can get the data from the image. And now that we have the data, we can actually save it to the path. So we'll do a quick little do catch statement here. We're going to try to data dot write, and we're going to write to the path. This should actually be URL. Let's call this URL. And we'll write to the URL. And so if this if this is successful and this does not throw an error, then we're going to say let asset equals CK asset. And we'll pass in our URL. Then we'll take this line of code here and we'll paste it up here. So we'll so we'll add this image field to our new fruit. And the asset will be the asset that we just made. And then finally, after we add this image, we can then call save. So I'm going to take this and put it up here. And this will be catch let error. And here we can just print out the error if we get one, which I don't think we will. All right, let's try this out. I'm going to build and run this project here. So basically, whatever we add, whatever the name is, it's going to find this image of the rock. 
and hopefully save it to the file manager, add it as part of our fruit, and then save that to CloudKit. So here I'm going to add a new fruit, and let's use peach, and I'm gonna click add, and we'll wait two seconds, and hopefully it updated. My UI did not, yeah, my UI updated now. Uh, and let's go take a look at the database here. So I'm gonna reload the database, our CloudKit container, and I should have a new, we can see it here, this peach, and this peach has a binary file attached to it. So this is really cool because we can see right off the bat here, we're not even diving into any of the data. We can see right off the bat that only this one has an image, it's got this binary file. And I can even click this little download button and it's gonna download whatever that file is. And this is so handy when you start debugging your apps. So when I open up that file, I can see what, whatever it is. So clearly we have a nice picture of the rock. Uh, but this is really handy because a lot of times if users are uploading your images or users are uploading audio, uh, it's really hard when you're in your database to really know what you're actually looking at sometimes. So the fact that we can just click this button and see that video, that audio, that image uh, is really, really handy. And what I want to point out is when I click into this asset, uh, as I was saying before, we can see down here, this the fruit now has two fields. We have image and we have name. Uh, and this, of course, is an asset with the binary file. So we can edit it here. But what's really important is that when we go to download these fruits, it's not going to actually give us this binary file by default. So instead, it's going to give us a URL to where this binary file is in CloudKit. All right, so I want to show you that before we actually download it. So let's jump back to our Xcode project. And we have a function in here, our fetch items function. And in our fetch items function, we have record matched block. And we are appending all of our records as we get them. So I'm on iOS 15, so I know this closure is going to execute, not this closure down here. So I'm just, as we get these records, let's just print them to the console quick. So let's print the record. And I'm gonna build and run the app and the fetch is called as soon as we run our app. So we should get a bunch of records printing to the console. Cool. And, and I wanna just show you guys here that, so these are the records that are coming through and we can see that our new record down here, this peach, also has this image, and, and clearly this is not actually an image. Instead, we are getting a CK asset, and inside that asset, we're getting the path to where this is saved. Now, I wanna just point out also that the path that we're getting back here, this URL that we are getting back from CloudKit is not the same as the URL where we saved our image. So this URL in the file manager is the URL that's saved to the device. So we saved our image to the device. Then we uploaded it to CloudKit, and in CloudKit, it saved it to a URL in CloudKit. So what we're getting back from CloudKit is the CloudKit URL, not the file manager URL. But now that we have this URL, we can actually just download it directly from CloudKit. So let's do that really quickly. So I'm going to go up to, uh, let's go to our fruit model, and and in addition to getting the name, let's also get, let's say, let image URL. And let's make it of type URL. And we'll make it optional because we only have an image on one fruit right now. So when we go to initialize our fruits, so it's down in our uh, record match block here, we can fix and we can add in our uh, image URLs. And then here, let's say, let image asset. And we'll set it equal to the record and we'll access the image key. And we'll try to cast that as a CK asset. And if we can get that, we'll, we'll say let image URL equals image asset. And then inside the asset is the file URL. So again, this is optional, but it's okay because we made it optional in our actual fruit model. So we can take the image URL and pass it here. All right, I'm gonna copy this and just paste it down here as well. And then paste in our image URL. And we just need to change this to returned record. Uh, I probably should have just made this record from the get-go. 
But uh, now when we download our fruit models, they might have an image URL. And if it has an image URL, we want to obviously put that onto the screen. So let's go down, down to our uh, view here. I'm going to go to our list where we have our just the names of each fruit. All right, let's put this text inside maybe an H stack. So I'll put the text first. And after on the right side of the text, we're going to put the image. All right, and then the fruit might have a URL. So first let's check if that fruit actually has an image URL. So we'll say if let URL equals fruit dot image URL. And then if we get that URL, we wanna to try to download the data from that URL. So a convenient way to download from that URL, we can say let data equals data. And we can, there's a, and there's a contents of completion. And this will initialize data with the contents of a URL. So this is exactly what we want. We will pass in our URL. And we can see the compiler here is telling us that this call can throw and it's not marked with try. So this data can possibly throw errors. So let's actually just try to get the data. And we're gonna use a question mark so that if it fails, it is okay. And we're doing this inside our if let statement, so it's all right. And then if we do get this data, we obviously want to create an image from that data. So then we can say let image equals and we'll open, and we'll create a UI image from and there's a data completion, of course. So we'll pass in the data to here and then we'll open the brackets. So if we can. So if this fruit has a URL and we can get the data and we can convert it to an image, then, of course, let's put the image on the screen. So we're going to create an image from a UI image. We'll pass in our image. Let's make it resizable and let's just make it, let's give it a frame of maybe 50 by 50. All right. I'm going to press play on the simulator. Let's pop this up and hopefully we can now download and we can see one image. All right. And just like that, we now have our image in our app. So I'm not going to go through the rest of this to actually build out a UI so that we can upload different images for different uh, fruits. We can do that in a future course. But what the point I wanted to get across in this video is that uh, when we're uploading just regular data types like strings, booleans, we can do that directly into our CK record. So the same way we added our name here, we can add in any other string or integer or Boolean, any of those normal data types. But when we're dealing with images or videos or audio files, we first need to get those files in our code. So we, here I have the image. And then we need to convert that file to some sort of data. And then we need to save that data uh, to a location in the file manager. And after it is written to the file manager, we can then convert it into a CK asset and then upload that CK asset as part of our model in CloudKit. And again, when we are looking in CloudKit, we can then see that uh, those fields will be uploaded as assets. But when we download this CK record, it's not going to download this binary file by default. Instead, it's going to give us a URL to where this binary file is saved in CloudKit. And then separately, we can go and download that binary data. So in our app right now, we uh, are creating our fruit model where we're getting that URL, but we're not actually downloading the image from that URL until we are basically putting it onto the screen. Literally, as we are putting it onto the screen, we are downloading it from the database. And in a more robust app, you probably wouldn't be doing some of this download directly on the view here. You would, you would probably create some sort of other image downloader class that is dealing with downloading these images and then just putting the image on the screen. But I just wanted to make this quick video to kind of point this out because I think uh, it's a very common use case. If you're using CloudKit, chances are you're going to at least want to upload a couple images uh, to your database. All right, guys, that was it for this one. This was a quick video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we have, I think, two more videos in this little CloudKit segment here. Thank you for watching. As always, I am Nick. This is Swift Full Thinking, and I will see you in the next video.